Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. And welcome to a video I've been waiting to make for nearly four weeks. You may well have been following all of the modifications I've been doing to my little R59 John Cooper Works Roadster, affectionately known as Ruby. Well, this is the video where I give you my final impressions of the last lot of work that was done, uh, which is basically the fitting of a Quaife Limited Slip Diff, an uprated clutch, um, Powerflex bushes and Mintex brake pads. So lots and lots to talk about. But what I'm also going to do at the end of this video is talk through the total cost of all the modifications I have done so far. Open and honest, how much does it cost me to make Ruby into a 270 horsepower, 395 newton meter monster? If you like your minis and you like your car modifications, Stay tuned, people! Woohoo! Now, it seems like an age ago that I embarked on the journey to fully modify this car. In fact, it was way back at the beginning of the year, sort of January, February time. To recap what I've had done, I basically had a low and performance pack two fitted to the car at the very beginning of the year. And that basically increased brake horsepower to 270 bhp and torque to 395 newton meters. Um, the performance pack 2 includes a 100 cell Akrapovich downpipe, so that made a huge difference to the noise that came out of the back of the car. And it also included party mode, which I won't be using for this video, but if I just turn the sport button on. It does that a lot so <laughs> I actually don't drive around in that mode very often I drove around in the, that, that uh, higher level of performance for a couple of months on the standard clutch and um, very rapidly realized that the standard clutch was not a happy bunny um, it wasn't that it was slipping it just on very hard acceleration you could feel it screaming in pain and I was also struggling to get the power down especially in damp conditions so that's the next set of the power modifications. Um, I had a uh, Quaif um, ATB limited slip diff fitted and a TTV racing clutch that was uprated to way more newton meters than I'm actually going to be putting through it. At the same time, I also had Powerflex bushes fitted and Mintex brake pads. So this video is really talking about what all of those changes um, really means to the driving experience. I've also had BC Racing coilovers fitted uh, and also uh, Team Dynamic 1.2 wheels with a slightly wider track and Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres. So all of those things combined, there's a lot to talk about. But I think the best thing to start with is one of the big reasons for the last lot of mods was just getting the power down um, and that's what the clutch and the diff have allowed me to do. So let's start there and what better way to start than with an Auto 60 test. Okay, straight bit of road, zero to 60, three, two, one. Come on, baby. Sixty. Now, the interesting thing, this car has so much power and torque, getting it off the line quickly, doing an auto 60 test is incredibly difficult, but for me, the performance of this car isn't about the 0 to 60 time. In first gear, first gear is so short, you're up into second almost instantly. Where this car comes alive is the mid-range acceleration you get in second, third, and even in fourth gear. It's got so much torque, you can really get from a, a, a decent sort of 30 miles an hour to 60 miles an hour so, so quickly. And that's where, when you're putting full power on, that's where you really feel the benefit of that clutch and the diff. Although, the diff comes alive when you get to a corner. So that's what we're going to do next. Alright, let's go find some corners. when you're on full chat from kind of 4,000 RPM. Here we go, here's a nice corner. 
that you don't have to change down into second like I would have had to before because you've got so much torque. But look at that, he's just pulling like a train. And that's the thing that Diff does for me. And I've driven a couple of minis with Diffs before. And you get in them and you think, oh, that's great. But because I didn't know the car before it had the Diff, you don't really realize the difference. Having driven this car post-tune, pre-diff for a couple of months and then you, you you put a diff in it the difference is night and day and honestly of all the modifications I've done even the power modifications because this car was doing nearly 240 brake as stock I think just putting a diff in it would have made an absolute world of difference getting the, the power down now it is it is a really dry day today not mega warm but it's dry in the wet this diff absolutely comes into its own it doesn't stop wheel spin obviously it doesn't stop torque steer but it, it reduces it so so much but what it does is it gives you that confidence that you can really get on the power on the exit of a corner and really nail it and, and that just makes your pace cross country so so quick what also makes a big difference is the the setup that Lowen did on this car. So after I had the racing coilovers done, um, if you've watched that video, I basically, we, we didn't change the ride height, we used them out the box as they came. Uh, and then we set the softness to midway between hard and soft. And when I went to Lowen, the guy said, look, that car isn't set up how we'd like it. We'd like a bit of rake on the car. So they raised the front by five mil and the rear by 15 mil so it's got a little bit of, of, of rake on the car and then they did what they call their fast road setup which basically has quite aggressive camber angles on the front and the back of the car and what it does is it makes the car immensely pointy um, it makes it a really engaging drive now i have to say that if you don't want a really go-karty pointy sharp drive it's probably not the setup for you for me it's perfect it, it's quite light at the back um, so you can rotate the car in the wet you have to be a little bit careful so I can see people might not like that but for me that combination of fast road setup the having softened the dampers off a little bit and just increase their ride height it just softens the the, the, the the feeling of the car and it's a bit more of a compliant ride it's still pretty firm in here pretty crashy um, but it, it's way way better than it was uh, and it just makes the whole driving experience absolutely brilliant and and you just i just can't i can't express how much different this car is to drive so some of the changes are like a sledgehammer to crack a nut the power is obvious um then you start getting slightly more subtle changes like the diff and the clutch they are for me i can feel them straight away it's funny mrs petropet's like yeah i've got no i can't feel it at all the difference isn't anything the clutch i was a bit worried that the spring on the clutch pedal might be a bit stiff it's really not um, the gear selector the gates took a little bit of while to bed in after the clutch had been done but the, it's back to how it was before but the other difference that um, in terms of handling was putting these power flex bushes um, in the car has made it very very direct There's, it's taken a lot of the slack out of the steering wheel and I think all of those things is like a sum of all those parts added together make this car when you're on a road like this just the perfect perfect b-road weapon it really is now absolutely stonking and then the final thing was the brake pads so I put Mintex brake pads in this. Now, there was nothing wrong with the brakes before. They, they, they felt fine. On a road, they're absolutely fine. However, on the rare occasions I have taken it on the track uh, since it's been done, they just didn't quite have the bite that I wanted. Um, so changing to Mintex has just given it a little bit more bite. In everyday driving conditions, they're, they're not squealy. They're not like some race pads you get. They, they just feel really nice. But when you hang on the anchors, the improvement in braking performance is absolutely mega. And, and it just gives you that confidence because believe me, with all the other changes we've made, this car is so, so much quicker than it used to be. Now I've brought it down this road because you can hear it is a pretty rubbishy road surface. It's very bumpy, but honestly, 
Um, I, I want my car to be a bit kind of go-karty and, 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 and really on the edge because that's, for me, that's the feel I want from a Mini. I can, I can imagine it really wouldn't be for some of you though, but it's just the knee. And then let's get this power on. Look at that power, power, power. The ultimate thing I've got out of this car is, is I've now got a driver's car that just, when, it, when you're on a road like this one, it's just mega, absolutely mega. Now, I think that's all the different modifications and how they drive. As you can see, I am pretty happy. Um, negative things from all the work I've had done. Do you know my only thing, negative thing, is when you put it in sport mode, my problem with it is, it is, it is proper, proper hooligan mode. And, and while that, that is amusing, it does drain after a while. And when I first had it done, I drove in that mode all the time. I don't tend to drive in it very often at all anymore. Um, and, and that would be my only, I, I could live without that. But I think what we need to do is head home and I think we need to have a chat about how much everything's cost. Because I don't know about you, when, when I watch these videos about people modifying cars and stuff, and uh, very rarely do they talk pounds, shillings and pence, or dollars and cents for my American viewers. Well, that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna head back to the barn and I'm gonna be open and honest about all the costs of all the things I've done. And I think you will be quite surprised. So let's head back to the barn, but we might do it in a spirited fashion. Well, back at the barn and I am just so chuffed with the way this car's turned out. And I had some thoughts about what I wanted it to look like when I started the process, but really absolutely chuffed to bits. What do you reckon, petrol pooch? Oh, you're in on the action as well, are you? I thought you two might be. So shall we tell everybody how much everything costs? What do you reckon? So, so let's start then with um, the very first thing we did, which was the Performance Pack 2. I've written everything down so I don't forget. Now the Performance Pack 2 is kind of a low end package that they do and that included a Stage 2 remap. Um, that took my power up to 270 brake, 395 Newton meters. And a Krapovich 100 cell down pipe. Uh, so basically uh, the cat, and then I kept the cat back system from the car. Uh, because that's pretty much the best sound and the best performance you can get in terms of bang for buck. I did think about a complete exhaust system. They do have some lovely ones. A Krapovich do a complete system and ragged zone as well, but I just thought I'd just do the 100 cell down pipe. Uh, new spark plugs, panel air filter, and a, a new uh, intercooler. Uh, and all of that fitted from Lowen, that is £1,599, which I think actually is pretty good value, to be honest, for what it does for your car. Um, um, the next thing I did was I went off to the B Road Hunting Club and we did a number of things. Uh, so uh, the most noticeable thing uh, from a kind of styling point of view are the new wheels. So Team Dynamic 1.2 wheels. Um, the wheels, um, it depends, you need to shop around. They are in the region of about £500 for a set of those. I did actually have those coloured as well, so it cost me a little bit more than that. Um, and then the tyres, again, shop around probably about £100 a corner uh, for a set of uh, Pilot Sport 4 tyres. Um, and then the racing coilovers, the BC racing coilovers, they were just over £1,000 fitted, £1,045 fitted. So that's not a cheap mod to do. But the good news, interestingly enough, is I actually sold my old wheels and tyres, even though two of the tyres were quite worn, for 450 quid. So that if you are thinking about um, replacing your wheels, that's something to think about is can you get any money for your old wheels and tyres if they're in good condition or might you might keep them and put track day tyres or winter tyres on them. But that's what I did anyway.
And then um, the other things that the um, B Road Hunting Club did, we did a D-Chrome um, and we spent about £200 on vinyl and the new mini badges uh, plus fitting. So um, uh, it would be probably a bit different because I worked together with B Road Hunting Club on that and they did me a bit of a deal. But um, you, you, need, you, could, you could do it yourself. It's not mega difficult. I'm rubbish at things like that, so I got someone else to do it for me. Um, and then the maybe the most expensive bit was the, the final visit to Lowen to get the diff and the clutch fitted. Now I'm going to give you the price for the diff and the clutch separately. Um, so the diff um, is about £600 and the TTV Racing clutch is £1,000. Uh, so there's a lot of hardware in there, um, but all together fitted because the, the big thing about the fitment of those is you have to do, take so much of the engine and gearbox apart um, that it, there's a lot of um, cost in terms of fitting those so that the actual component parts are expensive enough but the fitting is quite expensive too. Um, and we fitted Powerflex bushes. Now the actual bushes themselves were only £100 and I put them on because the car was already in bits anyway but if you just had Powerflex bushes fitted I think it's about £300 to have those fitted. Uh, and then the Mintex brake pads uh, they were £190 fitted. So the, the total bill for having the clutch, the diff, the bushes and the pads fitted was about two and a half thousand pounds. So, um, you know, the, there's, I've, there's a lot of money gone into that car to make it look like it does and make it perform like it does. I've totted everything up and it is just a smidge over six thousand pounds. So if you are looking at a modification project for your car, um, that's the kind of numbers that's that's how much that's cost to get it looking like that uh, is it worth six thousand um, pounds I have to say I really do think it is it's totally changed the dynamics of the car it is a an amazingly fast car now uh, you know A to B on a, on a on a country road it's just absolutely ballistic I need to do some more track days I've got a um, an auto solo coming up soon and I think it's going to be very very good at that um, with its new power and its new grip um, what if I were to kind of grade the things I've done in terms of doing it again, which order would I do them? I think the diff um, has made a huge difference and if you've got a relatively powerful car anyway, like a JCW, I think just putting a diff in it would make a massive, massive difference. Um, I love the Performance Pack 2 because it kind of does everything. Do you need a Stage 2 remap? Maybe not. I think I could have got away with a Stage 1, but I thought the Performance Pack 2 um, was something I would, I would go down. So there you go. Um, warts and all. I hope you appreciate my honesty. It's not something that normally as YouTubers are that comfortable at doing, if I'm honest. Um, but uh, lots of people had said, how much is it costing? What are the costs involved? Um, the final thing, just in terms of, of other costs you need to, uh, to think about, is your insurance costs. This will very much depend on your insurer. Um, my insurer was only interested in the engine modifications. They weren't interested in the, the wheels, the tyres, anything else. It was just the engine. That's the only thing that made a difference to my premium and it didn't go up by a huge amount about 50 pounds a year something like that it wasn't massive but you need to declare all of these modifications to your insurer because otherwise potentially your insurance could be uh, could be valid um, so yeah anyway i hope you've enjoyed that one if you have done so please give me a thumbs up Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. I would like to thank all the people that have helped modify Ruby. Um, the guys at Lowen, the guys at Quaif, and the B Road Hunting Club and Michelin. You've made my car into something very, very special. And uh, I, it's been a great project. Um, and, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching the journey. Put in the comments below if you think there's anything else left. <laughs> Maybe what else could I do to Ruby? But I'm pretty happy with the way she is, to be fair. But um, I'll draw it to a close there and I'll see you on the next film. But you take care, guys. Drive safe. <laughs>